conclusion, um, my my youngest, my Ben Zakunin, um, who I, I told him he must listen to this interview, but I'm going to tell him to listen up to this point because they'll be upset at me for mentioning him at all. <laughs> so so he, he he is a 12th grader, and and he is I mean he's immersed in in his Gemara learning in the sugi. He gets very deep into it, uh, non academically. What advice would you give to Tosvot learners, to Tal- Talmud learners, how to approach a Tosvot in a non-academic way, obviously. Then. Right. right. So I think what I would say, and it's interesting, I was just discussing it with, with a seminar of Dr. Antum last night. If you spend all your time doing some of the things I'm talking about, you, you won't learn too much. It'll take too much time. Part of the trick is, you know, w- which did you do first? How much did you do it? You know, bring it all together. Look, I sat with Rav Salavechik for years. Rav Salavechik was a Roshona file of the highest order. Not that he didn't care about the Achron, he knew all them by heart too. He knew all the Ksos, he knew all the uh, Shagas, he knew everything. But he focused us on Rishonim. So already at a young age, and all his students were my teachers over the years. So you already have an Itiyalaze. What I would tell Yeshiva people, people who are studying seriously, don't worry about the kitvayad. Again, do use the quote-unquote scholarly resources that are easily available. For example, a lot of times you're working on a sugi and tosfis, get the ritva on that sugi, go into the Mosar of Cook footnotes. They'll tell you things you didn't know that you didn't know from Tosfot that will help you learn that Tosfot because the ritva knows Tosfot great. In other words, use every critical edition that you're just, I don't mean every one, but use, you'll learn which are the most helpful. As far as learning itself, though, Think about who says it. How do we know he said it? Let's think about layers, right? Think about, uh, 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 you know, is this all, Tosfot is not Miro Echad, right? If you find a steer in the Rambam, you can immediately make a big shtickle Torah. If you find a steer in Tosfot, the Marsh already said, stay calm. The Machlok, it's a little stira, right? There are two different opinions. And there is value in knowing a little bit of the history, not because I'm just a mafunic, I want you to know dates and numbers and names and places, but because then you can make decisions about the learning. I'll give you an interesting example. Um, there was a, um, many examples, I'll give you an interesting example. Tosfot of Zara has several layers. First layer is actually a re-son, Rebbe Hanan ben Hari, who was killed by Kiddush Hashem in 1182, in 84. So he produced Tosfot around 1180. That's sort of the first take. We have them. There's a nice edition that was put out in Israel in 2005. It used to be in this Chinese print. Now it's a lovely thing with footnotes. It's good. Someone named Kreuzer. Um, the second layer is um, uh, uh, there is a Rash Mishans as well. There is a Rebuta Sirleon kind of a layer. There's a Shwomi Falez and there's a Rabbeinu Peretz. Sometimes the layers don't cohere. For example, rare, Tosfot Yudal Amad Bet, I actually, there's an article coming out on this now, but it's already been telegraphed. Tosfot Yudal Amad Bet in Avodah Zara talks about um, uh, what, what uh, uh, financial benefit can Jews, can they trade, can they use as pawns, um, uh, church garments, things like that, priestly garments of the church and so on and so forth. The, the, um, um, the chalice, you know, that kind of thing. Very machmir in Tosfot Yudal and Bet. And they mention someone named Baruch Ben Reb, and there's no father's name there. Probably sends it out. Machmir. And Dafnun, Tosfot of Azar quotes Rashi, Rashbam, the Re is working it. Much more Lakula. Now you'll say, well, if it was edited, redacted, didn't they catch the stira? No. And it reflects two, you can't catch everything. And it reflects two completely different schools in the Balei HaTosot. There's a school, a Humra, a school, a Kula, and it explains everything, and you can buttress it with, say, for Yireim, or Rebbe Metz, you can buttress it with, say, for Atruma, Baruch of Yitzchak, who's the, 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 the missing Baruch Ben Yitzchak there, and the learning goes great. Without that, it's a mess. It's a mess. It's like, what? Well, what do we do? That's a rare find. On the other hand, Tosfot and Dafchav Zayin, talks about a woman being a mohelet. So you there, right? A non-Jew can never be a mohel because he doesn't have a bris and he's not required to have a bris. Gemara raised the possibility based on psukim about a woman being a mohelet. Never mind Sipora, but just that, right? Machlok and Rishonim, Rambam, Geonim, Paskin, 
a woman can be a mohelet if no uh, better qualified male is available. And she can, she can fill in. And if she's more qualified, take her, right? To have the woman surgeon take her. Amongst Rishoni Ashkenaz, Machloket, there are some who are very maker. There are some who say outright that Minhadin, a woman can be a mohelet based on Machloket, Rav Yochan and Rav, they are in the sugya. Paskin like uh, Rav Yochan, everything's fine. However, Tosfot, a little little tiny Tosfot says, no, we Paskin like Rav. And we Paskin like, because normally we Paskin like Rav, you know, against Rav. We Paskin like Rav because there's a bright at the top of the page that, that forces the hand of the Gemara. Okay. So there's a wonderful article, I won't say by who, Choker Chashuv Mamish Great, where he wrote about the fact that in Smog, the, there seemed to be Tish Tushim where they try to fabester the smog. First, the smog said it was mutter for a woman to be a mohelet. And then, as the smog editions progressed, it starts saying the smog paskin is awesome. So, never mind that we know now that the smog wrote multiple versions of, say, from it's called at least two, maybe three, maybe he changed his mind. Leave that alone. But there's a problem here. In other words, so basically, the claim is at the end of the 13th century, right, um, uh, Rabbeinu Peretz, post Rabbeinu Peretz, they decide to be machmir, you know, from Kite. They decide to be machmir again. They just should see Bach. So they should be machloket. The problem is what nobody seemed to know. Well, people noticed it, but they didn't know what to do with it. Tosfot Rebbe Chonon is machmir. Tosfot Rosh Mishan is machmir. Other Tosfot pieces of machmir. So in other words, this was not a, a variable issue where until the late 13th century, everybody was making, and then suddenly they're machmir. This is an ongoing kind of an issue. So any claim that they change their minds, not that you can't change your mind, but it's just not true because you've got a ret of a Tosafist text. Again, Orbach says Tosafist uh, uh, Rebbe Hona was composed in 1182 before his death, right? Great, I, I accept. So between 1182 and 1282, you've got a whole rock solid she told Hatos, you know, she, she told Balei Hatos vote, Okay. So people again in learning can get all excited. Well, but from here or in scholarship, low dubi low yar. It's completely incorrect because you have no idea of the forensics. So I'm not suggesting that people become forensic toastfold accountants. I will give one uh, a very practical etza. Urbach's chapter, chapter thirteen in Balei Hatosfot, called Hatosfot Shalanu. Nothing to do with Mayim Shalanu, right? Uh, our printed toastfold. He goes through Masechta after Masechta by forensics, you know, proving who they quote, what are the layers. It's worth a read. It's like two pages per Masechta. I think it takes about 60 pages to do the whole thing. You know, 30, it's maybe 70. Um, you at least get an idea, and that will prevent you from barking up a wrong Tosfo tree. You know, now I'll tell you that uh, on Brachot, Orbach has this big Einfall that again, Yeshiva Bachram know too, because people you know know enough about this. Toso Brachot is Tosos Rio de Sierra Leone, good, but it was written by an Ashkenazi, says Orbach, because on Yoda Aleph and Bays in Birkat Torah, he refers to the Hanagot of the Tsar Fatim regarding Birkat Torah in the morning. And therefore, he invents a German student, doesn't say who he is, doesn't prove it, who was a student of Reb Moshe Mievro, who's the last Tosafist mentioned, and maybe mentioned in that Tosafist, the latest Tosafist mentioned. He was his student, but not his close student. He's got a whole, he invents a, he invents a German, right? Um, I think the whole thing is incorrect, and it's not my Chiddush. Yudnu Nepstein, 1939, was never published until 1980-something, decided that Tosafist Brachot or Rabbeinu Peretz. If Tosafist Brachot or Rabbeinu Peretz um, uh, he's Raboshim Evro's student. Rabbeinu Peretz, who's French, nonetheless writes on Maharam's uh, Tashbet. He refers to Tzorfatim Ashkenazim. He's an equal opportunity geographic cider. Make a long story short, if it's Rabbeinu Peretz, the whole Kasha goes away. There's no German Bachar Azet. So again, it's not going to affect Lomdis, but the whole thing goes. Eh, I'm writing it now. It's fine. But, uh, and again, Professor Orbach is there to scream at me. So, you know, it's the old story. I hope when I meet these people, they will think that I haven't lost my mind. And you, you are pretty good. You know, like the Ram Rav Chaim joke, not bad, but you got a couple of things wrong. I hope it'll be like that. Um, you know, and I won't have the Ram's response because only he can make his response to that joke. But in any case, um, this will help learning if you know who's who. It just, it just, there's a Rabbeinu Tam mentioned there uh, about Birkus HaTorah if you wake up in the middle of the night. So la Rabbeinu Tam, it's a Reish Mem, it's Reb Moshe Mevro. It's in, in other words, uh, if you if you want to fake a name, right, you don't know who this Reb Moshe is, I don't mean fake. 
sometimes he gets called Rabbeinu Hanano, Reish Chet, Yoter Mistaber. Sometimes Rabbeinu Tam, Reish Taf. So again, these are not, and these are not academic points that would dissuade any serious yeshiva bar. This is not like saying, eh, again, Ziyuf. But you have to look. The Sefer Mordechai, I'll prove that's the other thing that, that helps me a lot. The Sefer Mordechai has lots of names, dates, and serial numbers. And again, it's a good check. We tend not to use it because the printed edition is weak. But, you know, the 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 old edition, the, the Yeshivisha edition, the, I'm not, I don't work for Mahon Yushalayim, but their edition is very helpful. So uh, I told that to the Kol and I Yeshiva once. They said, hey, that's a good idea. So again, to the extent that you can inform yourself without completely schlepping yourself into it, you don't have to schlep yourself into it completely. You know, crazy people like me can try to schlep it, but you don't have to. You leave it to the crazy people like me, but if only unless you're interested. Uh, look, I have Yeshiva Bachram and Benot Yeshiva, who are my best doctoral students, because they've been learning all these things for years. But again, to you, Asanda Lamdin, who's not interested necessarily in the academic side, they know Chayav Liot, that's fine. Okay. Oh, this has been absolutely fascinating. We always say it's you know, a tip, just the tip of the iceberg here, but um, time is up. And um, yes. I hope, I, so I hope I haven't gone too long or too not, so, uh, not at all, not at all. prosaically. Been, but uh, been... I get I just gave a Zoom in Oxford, England, and I said something about Tsehamas. I said, you know, tip of the iceberg, Tsehamas Lake. You'll have to tell me what the British idiom for that is. British have great idioms, they didn't really have one. I don't know. I, you really? know, I thought. You know, the something of the something. We'll have to ask other people what their uh, idioms are. But anyway, thank you very much. And uh, listen, uh, bottom line, Rambam is very interesting. So is Tosot. Come Tosot. It's uh... all right. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.